friends, thanks for joining me. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about A Gathering of Shadows, the second book in the Shades of Magic trilogy by V.E. Schwab. I've decided to try for what I think is the first time on my channel doing a spoiler-filled review of a book. I've included spoiler-free sections in previous book reviews, but I wanted to be able to freely talk about my thoughts on this and the things that happened in this book with no caveats uh, and maybe spark some more detail discussion in the comments compared to uh, my spoiler-free reviews. So without further ado, here's a quick summary of this second book in case you need a refresher. This takes place four months after the events of the first book. Lila Bard, the thief from Grey London, has found a place among the crew of the Night Spire, a ship captained by Alucard Emery, a privateer working for the Maresh monarchy in Red London. And then Kel, uh, the Antari blood magician, is constantly plagued by guilt for what he did in saving his brother Rai's life by binding it to his own with a soul seal and he basically fears to live life in any way that may cause pain to his brother uh, because literally when one of them feels pain so does the other they're bonded and on the opposite side Rai has to deal with the fact that he has become something of a cage to his brother while also being trapped by him himself because uh, Rai can't die unless Kel does on top of the pressures of, of Rai being first in line to the throne. One of the main plot threads in this book is the Essen Tash, the Element Games, translated into English, which is a friendly international competition where magicians fight using their uh, magical elemental abilities until there is one winner. Rai is put in charge of running the games and all of the formalities and celebrations that entails. Um, in an attempt to sort of burn off some of both his and Kel's anxiety, he finds a way to sneak Kel onto the roster for the competition under a false name. Lila also finds a way to join the competition by disappearing one of the lesser known competitors and taking his place. And while the competition is winding up, there's this fleeting but important side plot happening in the background that ties things into the events of the first book. Uh, it turns out, as I had predicted, and I guess it was it was kind of obvious, but um, Holland, the other Antari, didn't actually die after being sent to Black London with the magic stone, um, Vitari, and he winds up making a deal with the source of that world's demise called Oseron to save his world of White London. So unsurprisingly, I liked it a lot. I liked this book a lot. I gave it four out of five stars, um, you know, 4.5 if I could. I like that we got a couple more POVs from different characters. In the first one, I think we really only had points of view from Kel and Lila. There were like a couple really short ones from some other side characters, but those two were the vast majority. But in this book, we finally get lots of POV from Rai as well, and these recurring moments from Holland and Ojka, I guess is how I'm pronouncing her name, um, which I thought, you know, kept things kind of fresh. Um, and even though Ojka is just like kind of just a random girl, uh, basically meant for Holland to play off of and show what he has become and what he's doing. Right off the bat, I really enjoyed like the opening sequence where Lila is floating on her own in like a sinking dinghy to trick that pirate ship into taking her aboard so she could just murder everyone. I was really confused at first because it, it didn't make sense. She has this barrel of ale given to her as a parting gift, she calls it, but then like shortly after she says that she herself drugged the ale and I managed to not quite put two and two together in time and didn't realize that she was in on the whole thing all along. <laughs> I also really like Alucard. He's cool. Um, he's up there with Kel as, as my two favorite characters in the series so far. But one thing that kind of took away from me giving this a full five stars, because it was close, um, is the S and Tash. So like the games are introduced pretty early on as a driving force in the story and everyone is talking about it and speculating and preparing for it, but 
Um, Schwab really like takes her sweet time finally showing us the games. Um, I don't know, I feel like I was kind of baited with the concept of a cool magical contest as being the main focus of this book when it only, you know, comes on screen in like the last quarter of the book, which was kind of a bummer for me. I, I think that in general this book was much more character driven than the last. Um, most of it, most of this book to me was examining the relationships between the characters as well as just their inner thoughts and struggles and, and their regrets. Lots of those, lots of struggles and regrets. And thankfully, for the most part, I, I love the characters. So despite being disappointed that more of the book wasn't the S and Tash, I still enjoyed seeing into the hearts of the characters that I was introduced to in the last book. What kind of sucks though is that I didn't enjoy Lila as much as I did in the first book. I mentioned in my other review how I really liked her characterization and I appreciated how badass she was without being cocky and annoying and I feel like she became more Mary Sue-ish. I just don't think it's very realistic that in only four months she learns how to manipulate three elements where um, most people can only handle one and she was able to like trick and overpower this other competitor to take his place and like was actually able to hold her own against her competition who have lived their whole lives using and practicing magic and she just waltzes in and does super super well. I guess I'm just like, I'm with Kel on this one, like she was being reckless and stupid and doing dangerous stuff. Um, I mean granted I think she's supposed to be special even beyond just being a grey worlder who can use magic, so maybe it will all like make sense in the third book why she was able to do these things, but for now I was just kind of irritated that things just kept kept going her way and she kept getting away with things. I was also a little confused by Kel and Lila's relationship, so I thought that their relationship was platonic by how the first book went and I, I made a big deal about like about that fact and the fact that I loved it. I love platonic relationships that are done well rather than just forcing it to be a romance. Um, and of course relationships can develop over multiple books and I think that the best ones do, um, but I, I don't know what kind of relationship Lila and Kel are supposed to have. Like in this book it felt kind of romantic a lot of the time and they like they make out very passionately at one point but I still can't tell if they're like meant to be romantic um, or if they were just meant to be I don't know be really passionate in a non-romantic I don't know what was going on I really liked their platonic relationship in the first book and I don't think they need to be a romantic couple so I just felt a little confused about that. Also, as much as I do like Rai and Alucard together, the scene where they finally meet again after all that time just kind of read as awkward to me with so Alucard goes all like dominating and seductive, like biting Rai's ear and all that. Like it was just it read weird to me and it was just like unrealistic and like it's it's fantasy so whatever right like I'm sure tons of people thought it was super sexy and hot but I thought it was just over the top and I wish that their reunion was done a little less aggressively. In spite of those things though I really did like the second book it was it was both refreshing and familiar with uh, a very different focus than the first in several different ways, um, from it being more character driven to focusing a lot more on the elemental magic of the world rather than how the first focused on the Antari magic, um, to this book focusing on a competition rather than like a bad guy for the most part. Um, I'm, I'm loving this series. Um, I can see this as being a series that I highly and readily recommend to people that I know, which is actually kind of rare for me. I have a hard time actually recommending specific books to friends because I worry that they'll end up disliking it or that it isn't like quite what they're into. Um, but this series has just so much going for it to love that I'm truly confident that I know people who would also really enjoy it, you know, for what that's worth. 
So thank you guys so much for watching. I know I didn't include like crazy spoilers or anything, but uh, you know, for me it feels like a lot because it's not what I've ever done in the past. So let me know your thoughts and feelings on this series so far. Um, I'd love to chat about it. Um, I've loved everything I've ever read by V.E. Schwab. Um, granted, it's only four books so far, but I've loved all four of them for the most part, and I'm looking forward to the third and final book. Um, so I hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye!